Let's restart that. Hi, everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. And I'm Coco Gem Holiday. And today we're going to be talking about Camp Wanakiki, Season 2, Episode 4. Yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite episodes for absolutely no reason. No reason at all? Just none. I'm no? like, gosh, so crazy. Oh, dang. Well, I mean, we'll figure that out here in a little bit. But last Yay. week was a double elimination. Yes, last week so. was a double elimination. We had Carly, Carly and Einem Clyde mm-hmm. and Ivana uh, going home, taking yeah. a hike. Yeah. Yeah. So that what are some stories that you have about both of them? So now I can say it. Um, I was going to say it last week, but... I obviously didn't. We're trying to not have too many spoilers for who goes home, so there can be something mm-hmm. fun, as we've mentioned before. So Carly is one of my favorite people in the gosh darn universe. Yeah, so you've heard it here before, the hashtag thruple thing. Do you want to explain yes. that? So me and Carly and one of the cameramen, his name is Beto, like we became really good friends, fast mm-hmm. friends and whatever. And so we were just joking that we were in a thruple or whatever because yeah. we always hung out with each other and thought it was absolutely hysterical. So that's where hashtag thruple for life and hashtag thruple came from. Yes. Um, it's <laughs> and one of the things is when Carly went home, so you have to remember, like we said before, we don't see the take a hike videos. Mm-hmm. And what Carly's video made me so sad because um, we don't get to see those until yeah. they air. And yeah. it was heartbreaking oh, watching bet. her go home. And now I can say it too. All of Portland thought Carly was like trade.com. I was going to say just now, oh like at the viewing party, Carly, if you ever want to come out to Portland, you'll do well well here. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that want your ass. So. Lots of dick. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. So come over here and get it. <laughs> yeah. Like she, she was one of my favorite people and all of Portland thinks you're trade. Uh, mm-hmm. That was all over the internet. Yes. And Ivana, uh, that was heartbreaking too. Now I'm really close with Ivana, and I make fun of her a lot on the show, yeah. just because it's funny. But she's so talented in every capacity, mm-hmm. and to see her go home was just heart wrenching. Like mm-hmm. I just was like, she was so sweet, yeah, and she was so kind. She would always say, "How you doing, Coco? Yeah, <laughs> how you doing?" And I'm like, "Good, Ivana." <laughs> like. Because she's just, I don't know, she's warm. Yeah. Like, when you're missing she home. She has that whole, like, terminally delightful kind of, like, like uh, persona that she puts on, I think, when she's in drag. And it's, yeah. it, it probably definitely, it, like, probably made you guys, like, have a little bit more, like, happiness and positivity around you. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. She definitely brought the joy. That's so good. So, seeing her go home was really her- terrible because I hate everybody who's left. And <laughs> yeah. well, and you, and you need that joy in a very taxing competition like oh, this. Oh, gosh, so, so taxing. Yeah. She boosted morale is what I was trying to say. I kept mm-hmm. tripping over my words. Um, all right. So the first uh, daily activity was that rowboat challenge. Yes. And you were split up into teams of two. We had Diana and Tora. There was also Boris and Barbara, you and Claire. And then yes. we had Kitty and Vivica. Yes. So, Claire did not want to be my partner because I'm a terrified of water. Yes, I'm a black <laughs> statistic. No, I cannot swim. And so that was like, there's no way to make that funny when you're actually terrified. You actually told me that you wanted to take swimming lessons from me before you went to camp. Oh, I did. Yeah. And she was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to teach you how to swim. <laughs> She's like, not in that amount of time. And so I, it's funny when you're there, mm-hmm. you're not really ever considering what you can and can't do. So by this point in our podcast, you notice that, you know, we did the high ropes course or whatever. Yeah. So like I said before, I'm not afraid of heights yeah. or whatever. So watching people cry like Boris did and yeah. whatever, and, and those heart wrenching moments, like I didn't have any of that until Except this point. For the water. Yeah. When you see Ruthie explaining what we're doing, like they'll cut to my face and you can't see like the character remain because I'm terrified. Oh my God. Like, so you're like, see me like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh. all the joy just leaves. like it just leaves like <laughs> my face starts getting different colors like it's just watch me for that first part you're like oh, oh she's gosh. over this <laughs> yes she wasn't over it she was just like she's gonna die today yeah that's fine she's gonna die yeah and i did say uh, in the bloopers you see how i mentioned how diana has a canoe or something like that <laughs> so I actually wanted to have Diana on my team. I love you, Claire, but I did because I remember Diana saying that beforehand, that she's mm. like an expert rower 
and all this other stuff. And so I was like, I was super hoping to get Diana on my team. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, yeah, this will work out well. So I can just sit and be funny and, you know, she'll do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, Tora got to sit and be funny and do yeah. all the work. And Diana did all the work. So the end results ended up being Diana and Tora in first. We had uh, Boris and Barbara in second. Uh, Coco and Claire were in third, and then we had Kitty and Vivica in last. Yes. Um, because Vivica was the only one rowing in that group, right? <laughs> yes. Well, Kitty's 9,000 years old. Yeah. Because um, she celebrated her birthday. She was 89999, um, but now she's 1,000 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how that math worked. No, that wasn't. Oh, no. It's close. Good Whatever. try. <laughs> well, we'll Math's hard. Math's not hard. what I went to school for, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I wasn't going to catch you on it. <laughs> <laughs> So behind the scenes tea, mm. which just doesn't ruin the studio magic. It really Drink. doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cold. I know that that illusion, I don't know how much the Sugar Baker twins want that to be known or not known, but it was cold. It was very cold. And so we were all freezing by the mm-hmm. time that was done. And the water's cold. Yeah. So the last shot, which I think is hilarious. And this is just funny. By all means, this is funny. Yeah. The... So you'll see my hair in the background, and Tora and Diana are accepting their prize. I'm the only one actually there still, because I didn't fall in the water, because one, I'm black and the hair thing. But number two, uh, everybody else is drying off. So so you're just seeing Coco being like, <laughs> like it's, it's just funny to me. It's just, it's hilarious. Because there are people like, like, and then also other people lost, and some people just want to mm-hmm. go back. So we find out that the guest judge this week is going to be T-Rex. T-Rex from Chicago. Yes. Yes. It was really woke of her. I do want to give her this small shout out. So her name used to be Tranica Rex, and she actually changed her name to T-Rex to be more inclusive and less transphobic. And I think that's really woke of somebody who has the notoriety that she does. Uh, she's very well known in her scenes, and she mm-hmm. travels around doing drag. Oh, yeah. Um, it, so that was just cool. Let's she is the queen to be booked by in Chicago. Yes, she is. Yes. Um, yeah, so that was our guest judge this week was T-Rex. And then we had, of course, the Sugar Breakers and Ruthie. Judging the water sports themed uh, talent show. Talent show. Talent the nightly show. talent show. <laughs> I was like, are we doing a dance? Like, where are we doing? Talent show. <laughs> I get, now that there's three different shows that have drag on it, I'm like, okay, is it floor show? Is it runway? Is it talent show? I'm trying to like cycle through which show we're talking about now. Exactly. So, you know. So, my outfit, the blue dress I already had, it's a dress I made. Uh, I made it for, I think, the Diva Awards in Denver. I think it was. Yes. Yeah. I remember you wearing it yeah. with the red hair. Yes. The short red hair. Yes. Because Donatella and I got nominated for Best Karaoke Show of the Year. I got nominated for Western Colorado Entertainer of the Year. Mm-hmm. And we, we got didn't nominated get for something. We got nominated for something else. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. But we lost that, too. So we lost all three. That's fine. <laughs> so, all good. So that's what I made the dress for. So what we did with the dress is my friend Kyle, Natalie Simone. Mm-hmm. Uh, has been really into frills lately so what she did with my dress is so we got the collar a little bit more figured out but we she cut the front of my dress and actually put all of the all of the strings the little, in it yeah yeah so she added the that fringe. to my dress yeah so I bought all the stuff for the crown and my friend Jesse and my partner Adam they put the crown together, together. We kind yeah. of glued the pieces together I glued one piece so it was fine so yeah. I technically made it head to toe <laughs> like I said in the episode uh, uh, it also I sewed I, I so the crown is actually a foam hard foam uh-huh. and I sewed that together with um, velcro on it and oh. so Jesse and Adam glued the st- uh, glued the, the shells it. to it mm-hmm. so what were some other looks during that talent show that stood out I you? loved Torah's yes that concept was super there. Now, the concept was great. I want to say that I know that some people are thinking it's a little bit lazy in the sense of like it was kind of just like a trash bag with a belt around it and mm-hmm. whatever. But when you think about what she was doing, like obviously she's a person who was thrown the mobster whole like swimming with the fishes, yeah, with the cinder blocks. Yeah, it was it was a story. It was a it story. Was a whole story. Yeah. With Tora's look, I thought the whole concept was super there. Yeah. I don't think I needed her story at all. I super knew what she was talking about, like T-Rex said about mine. Mm-hmm. That the second I came out, she would want to tip me because she knew, what I, she knew what I was doing. Yeah. Stuff like that. Some other standouts for me were Boris and Claire. I really liked theirs. And um, I really love the story that Boris is told. 
the whole like dead fish, like oh, getting yeah. flushed down. Yeah, getting flushed down the toilet, and it came. It started with him having like the sequin cape over the the toilet around his neck at first, right. and then he took it off, and then he had the X's on his hands for the yeah. eyes. Yeah, that was. That was I didn't see that when yeah. he did that. I never. I didn't see that when I was there. You have to remember. You have to remember when I was in my look. I, I'm always just like you know focus on like telling my story doing well yeah I see what other people are wearing seeing my how I might place or whatever but like I was about what I was doing so I didn't ever saw Boris's hands oh okay. and so when I saw that during the episode I was like oh that's really cool yeah all right so the uh, tops and bottoms of this week uh yes so in the bottom this week we had Barbara Wire yes and. We also had Vivica. Vivica in the bottom. And their looks were kind of similar in the reasons why they were in the bottom, I felt. Right. It just wasn't amped up enough. And that's something that they kept getting from the judges, is that it wasn't amped right. up enough. So for Barbara's outfit, which her... The, the funny thing is, Barbara is a great actor. Mm -hmm. Like, so when she came out and she had the little, like, wet cloth and whatever, and she removed it, and, like, the makeup's kind of smeared. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of actually digged that. Like, seeing I it in the filming, yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. Because like, I didn't see that there. So seeing it with everybody when it came out online, yeah. I was like, wow, that was great. Yeah. So I loved that. The one thing I would have said about Barbara's outfit, because I got it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I did. I got it. I would have wanted, I kind of agree with T-Rex. I would have wanted, like, a thousand balloons and so I know Barbara would have had to blow up all of those balloons before she went out yeah or whatever but you know to make the look really sing and sell like I think that that would have been a little bit better because when I saw like because honestly it's not a bad look yeah it, it wasn't a bad look and I thought it was a, a pretty neat concept I would have liked to see more balloons I would have liked to see it just a bit campier it would have added, added more volume to the outfit. It would have added, like, a different level that I think would have been a bit more impressive when it came out. Right. Because it did... I think both outfits that were in the bottom this week kind of read a little bit arts and craftsy. Mm -hmm. um, just because of how they were presented. And granted, you know, Vivica had more stuff glued onto hers, but still it was a little bit... It was a little arts and craftsy, especially when right. there was so much thought put behind the, the design of all the rest of the... Right. Campers. I agree. I I fully agree. So with Vivica's, I can see, especially with what the judges said, I can see why she was in the bottom. Yeah. Her team didn't come in, like, her team was last. Like, you know, so it all just kind of fit, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. It, it just fit. Yeah. And so it made sense for those two. So the top two this week um, are me, Coco Jim Holiday, And our other Portland queen, Diana Fire. Yeah, you can yeah. go Diana Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so two Portland queens. Well, Coco was uh, from Grand Junction at the time, mm -hmm. but we have two Portland queens this week that are in the top. And yes. Diana was a giant loofah that I, her presentation was my favorite thing about her look, was the whole yes. like scrubbing the stairs with her crotch. Um, she did clean the stage <laughs> with her poo say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I really loved the bottom part of her outfit. That, yeah, that was that cute. That big loofah skirt that she had on, that was awesome. So one thing I will say about Diana is she made, I believe, everything she brought. Mm -hmm. She made everything she brought. Yeah. No, I, I recall that because I, I remember actually seeing this outfit before. Mm. Yeah. I kind of well, I got to see the beginning stages of outfits. I never got to see like a fully completed one before Diana left, but I did sure. get to see little beginning stages of some of the outfits. And one of one of the other ones that I got to see was the woodland creatures, the beginning oh, stages fun. of that too. So cool. I got to see sketches. She had a whole process for putting these together. That's so funny. just a really Good creative individual, and yeah, for not having a team, you know, like she fucking did it. She yeah, put it together. She did. She did because my team consisted of. Donna giving me some advice about what to do for, like, uh, different talent shows. Uh, it's not a secret, just like Drag Race, we did kind of know what the talent shows would be. Not mm -hmm. fully, but, you know, just, it's the same thing. Like, with Drag Race, it's like, bring something that's, like, money-related or whatever. Yeah. So those are not big secrets. Like, any of these shows, they kind of give you a rough idea. Definitely. About what you're about to bring. So, with mine, so I had Donatella giving me some advice on some of my concepts because she had moved to Portland. Mm -hmm. Adam helped me with the creation of my outfits because he can sew too. Uh, Natalie and Freya were kind of my idea machines. Yeah. Uh, they, like, anytime I came up with an idea, they just, like, would beat it down. Yeah. So, like, the out-of-this-world look, 
I came up with that idea, and Natalie hated that idea. <laughs> She's like, no. And I was like, no, I'm going to do it. It's going to be fun. And so we would have moments where Natalie and Freya would be arguing in front of me, and I would have to choose sides about who was going to get the idea for the costume. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. That is stressful. <laughs> it was so stressful. So stressful. Oh, my but, gosh. Uh, and we know how stubborn Natalie is when oh, she wants she to make candy. something her yes, way. Ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, We're all stubborn, but that girl, when she has a concept down that she wants to do. Oh, yeah. She was about that lifestyle. <laughs> she was going to do that concept one way or F another. Yeah. So going back to Diana, I, I really admire. So me and Diana are really close friends. So before we tell you who wins, the thing that was so exciting was just getting to share that moment with her. Yeah. So when they're like, because... Do they? Yeah, they do the tops of the week first. Yeah. Yes. So they were like, Diana, Coco, you're on the tops this week. And so, like, we're, when we look at each other or we're holding hands or things like that, those are genuine friendship moments oh, yeah. with her and I. Yeah. Like, it's not just, like, a joke. Like, we're just, like, laughing. We're being stupid together. We love each other. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. it's kind of great. It's not for the cameras. It's not for the cameras. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll just tell you, I was the winner. Coco won. I won this week. She's not just safe this week. I know. <laughs> I beat Kitty. <laughs> Seriously, because at this point, me and Kitty were talking about, oh, we're all safe, you and I, Kitty. Yeah. We haven't won daily activities. We haven't really lost daily activities. Uh-huh. And neither of us have won a talent show. Yeah, we've always just been dismissed and gotten our badges. Yeah, yeah. so... I can t- so I want to share what it's like to win. So when you win something like this on probably any of these shows to a degree, yeah. you are on a high until the next oh, day. I, I mean, yeah. literally until the next day, you are on a massive high. Yeah. Like so, when I go, because we get to see who goes home, mm-hmm. we sit in the back of the room and we listen. But during this one, I was on such a high that I was just smiling. I was like. Hey, <laughs> like, I can't believe it. Like, I actually liked it. It's great. And everybody's like, girl, it was awesome. Like, of course you are going to win. Like, we all knew you we were going to win. And like I said that before, like, none of the girls really talked to me about my office. They did talk to me about that one. A lot of oh, girls okay. were like, wow, you just yeah. came to party. You did knock it out of the park with that. <laughs> yeah, you did. That, oh, that's good. We'll see what happens next week, since mm-hmm. you guys obviously know I'm in it next week. Yeah. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to A Gem of a Secret. We'll see you next week. Bye, Bye. you guys. <laughs>